The subject for my research project in this course in remote sensing is identification of vineyards and change detection in the Prosecco wine area. Prosecco is produced in the northeast of Italy between Veneto and Friuli Venezia Giulia. There are several types of wine quality designations. A designation certifies the area of origin and the production regulations of the wine. The highest level in Italy is the DOCG, followed by the DOC. Now, why are we interested in that? In this chart, uh, we see the growing demand of Prosecco through the years, which led to a proportional expansion of the vineyards necessary to uh, produce the wine. This is a land conversion phenomenon and it's bringing those areas towards a monoculture. In this study, I will investigate a remote sensing approach for vineyard registration and a measure of land conversion in the Prosecco DOC and DOC G areas between 2000 and 2018. I defined a certain research approach, which I will describe step by step. The first um, is the selection of a suitable satellite and the satellite scenes. The choice of the satellite was pretty straightforward because uh, only the Landsat mission has a catalog of consistent scenes from 2000 to 2018. I have downloaded then nine scenes between 2000 and 2018 from Landsat 5 to Landsat 8. The choice of the month is important so that uh, the phenological aspects are not influencing the results. The period of June is uh, before the harvest, which is usually in early September, and is uh, at the beginning of the grape growth. Plus, June in this area has usually better weather conditions compared to other months. In fact, the second step is to verify the historical weather conditions. I have searched in the archives of wunderground.com, um, eventually integrating with other local sources, and I could check the absence of rain in the two to three days prior each image acquisition. Then some pre-processing and clipping. The DOC area here in blue is bigger than a single scene. This suggests that uh, we should do some mosaicing. Um, the, sheen, the scenes also, they align, but not perfectly, so we should pay attention to the analysis uh, at the boundaries. Um, we have also a processing time issue, uh, because, also because of the size of the DOC area, and uh, almost all scenes are affected by some clouds. So, how do we approach that? For the first three point, points, I decided to focus on the smaller DOCG area. For the clouds issue, we will see how to drastically reduce this problem. In fact, the clouds are mainly located above mountain areas up to 2,200 meters. But actually the grapes, they grow only up to 500 meters elevation. So we are not interested in the land higher than 500 meters. Then I downloaded the um, S S uh, SRTM digital elevation files from Earth Explorer. And through this procedure, I extracted a shape file of below 500 meters elevation. See here how we get rid of the cloudy areas because they are all mountains. And same story for the smaller DOCG area. Then I have downloaded some aerial images from the Veneto region website from year 2000, uh, which I have georeferenced. Uh, using around 20 reference points. Uh, this will be useful for ground truthing. Then I started with uh, the image analysis uh, and uh, from the bibliography I have selected five indices. Um, NDVI, modified simple ratio, the greenness index, plant cell density and adjusted uh, soil adjusted vegetation index. I started from 2017 uh, in fact, I took uh, year 2017 as a reference, as this is the latest supported by official figures. Here you see uh, the five indices with the higher values in green and lower values in red. I also analyzed the relative histograms, looking for interesting thresholds uh, to use for clipping. Then uh, I used those indices to produce a color composite image uh, with uh, uh, SAVI, MSR, and G uh, combination uh, as uh, the best case. Uh, in this case, the vineyards pop up pretty nicely in pink. The forests are yellow greenish, the urban areas in brown, black, and the water in blue. Zooming at the red rectangle in the bottom left, um, we notice better how the pink, yellow, and brown areas differentiate uh, quite well uh, the, the, the vineyards, 
the forest and the urban areas. Then I calculated the same indices from 2000 Landsat 7 image. I used the same copy-pasted style from, uh, in QGIS from the Landsat 8 indices so that I can compare them. And we see how G looks much greener. MSR and PCD look much reddier. Um, this is a sign of different ratios between the spectral bands in the two images. I could not identify spe specific index uh, thresholds, so I moved to the next step, which is uh, indices subtraction between, between my two references, 2017 and 2000. Um, uh, green are vegetation growth and red are vegetation losses. Uh, the study index looks like uh, the one with the highest uh, yellow unchanged area and many localized green and red spots, which is the most realistic. And here we see an example of built area converted uh, later on into a cultivated field. I also computed the MODIS and DVI using the APPEARS website from 2000 to 2018. The MODIS results show that we should get very similar distributions between 2000 and 2017. Instead, we got a Landsat 7 and DVI, which is much lower off compared to the Landsat 8 and DVI. For this reason, I have tested also other two images from 2000, another Landsat 7 image from two weeks before, and the Landsat 5 image from one week before. The results are surprisingly not the same, uh, so we have some data issues here. Remember that these are all atmospherically corrected, cloud-free images. Then I started to do some classification. Um, we have a few challenges. In fact, there are no big homogeneous areas. Uh, there are, the vineyards are uh, quite small, even compared to the pixel size. This means that the training sites must be many and uh, very small. Also, vineyards boundaries are quite mixed with trees and urban areas, and the ground between the vine rows can vary a lot. Also, almost every year, some areas are affected by some disease, which affects moisture um, of the leaf and um, the spectral reflectance. I have tested three approaches. First, classify based on normal spectral signatures. The second, using indices as bands in a stacked image and Finally, I normalized all bands in each image using z-scores, and then I trained the signatures on the normalized images. This last one gave actually the best results for classification. Now, it would be too much time consuming to select training sites from each image. So again, I took the year 2017 as a reference. There, I trained my signatures, and then I ran the classification algorithms through all the other images. As a final step, I compared the classified images through the years and I calculate the um, land cover surface area for each class. Here you see the classified images from 2000 to 2018. In purple, the vineyards, in green, the forest, in yellow, the urban area, and the water in blue. I have used the 2017 image uh, to train the signatures, which I deployed in all the other image. The classification is pretty consistent. Some images got less classified pixels, like uh, for the 4th of June uh, 2000, 2000, and the one in 2015. And in all cases, uh, we got less classified pixels than in 2017 image. So now let's go and look for the evolution through the years using uh, the same colors. In purple and in red, we can compare the estimated vineyard area in hectares with the official vineyard area, which is the one in red. It starts with some confusion in 2000, uh, then uh, the increase of vineyards land cover follows the real evolution, and then we have a drop uh, of all classes in 2015. As a conclusion, uh, we say this is a first promising step, which has uh, still some aspect uh, to improve. Uh, for example, the amount of classified pixels due to the small training sites, uh, the comparability of data among the dates and among the satellites. And uh, for that, I recommend uh, to extend the study to the DOC area to check also the validity of the train sig signatures through a wider area, to increase the amount of training sites, to investigate further normalization approaches, 
and to find additional truth in sources uh, for the past, and also to identify patterns like uh, the Vineyard's rows uh, using geometric filters or machine learning. Finally, here are some, refer some references which I used uh, through the study. And thank you.